who say they've come out that lifestyle, but they're still dressing masculine. But we will not tolerate that with a male on the platform. Nobody can answer that. My, my argument is not about women wearing pants. My argument is not about women wearing baggy clothes. My argument is about dressing with the appearance to look masculine and vice versa, dressing with the appearance to look feminine. And the next lady over there is Jack Hill Perry. All right, so uh, Marcus Rogers did a video where he was talking about how women present themselves, especially how women dress. And he ended up receiving a backlash, I guess, from people who support Jack Hill Perry. And it was, uh, you know, Jack is open about her story. What happened when she was in li that lifestyle? She was a star. That's what it's called. So according to Marcus, there were so many stars who came after him. So my saw he ended up uh, deleting that video. According to Marcus' testimony, he was not talking about, he wasn't talking about Jackie Hill Perry. He was just posing a question and referencing to somebody else, right? So I'm going to play the video and then we're going to make a commentary as it is, okay? So Marcus Rogers, the question that he's asking is, is it okay to, uh, to have women in the church who are dressing in a masculine way? If we say that it's okay, we why do we tolerate that if we don't tolerate a man who used to be in the rainbow uh, community lifestyle, if they come to church and they dress in a feminine way, would you have an issue with that? If the answer is yes, why don't you have an issue with the other with the other side, right? It's like we are creating double standards. So we have a clip of um, Marcus Rogers. Okay, so we're going to hear him saying these things with everything else that transpired. And then we are going to... Uh, Talk about it using uh, scriptures, okay? So um, here we go with uh, Marcus Rogers. Goodness, I posted it on TikTok. I posted it on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And man, the fireworks got started. The, the conversation uh, actually got a little bit ugly uh, with certain individuals. Uh, people found my comments uh, offensive. And a lot of times, right, I'm trying to have conversations that I feel that the church needs to have but doesn't want to have. And one of the things that I said yesterday in response is, you know, you see some of the things that have been said by certain individuals uh, like Tim Ross talking about the Holy Spirit told him to cuss and some of the other, you know, podcasts that he does. And I don't see the same, uh, you know, energy for that. But anyways, I wanted to come back, talk about this. Oh, by the way, I'm going to invite any uh, body from the LGBTQ community that, you know, you used to be in that community. Now you're saved. I want to have a conversation. I want to have a sit down about this topic because man, yesterday, all of the what we would call ex studs. They were coming for me. They were in the comments. They were uh, highly upset. Um, and obviously you see Jackie Hill Perry in the thumbnail. I want to get this out of the way at the beginning. I wasn't even thinking about her when I made this video. I actually was thinking about somebody else that I had seen um, in a you know church video. I'm not going to even you know give you an idea because I don't want people to speculate, but people made the conversation yesterday about her. I didn't mention her. I didn't bring her up. I wasn't thinking about her, but it got pretty ugly. Uh, also, I've already dm'd uh, her husband because he had dm'd me about something else that i had commented on so i'm always down to talk with anybody right lecrae anybody so let's clarify yesterday what was the big issue i simply asked the question i said if a man who was living in the lgbtq lifestyle uh got saved and he says hey i'm delivered now but he came to church and he was still dressing feminine still dressing like a woman my point was we would not tolerate that on the platform we would not let a man get behind the pulpit with makeup, earrings, uh, a dress, or just looking and acting very feminine. We wouldn't let them uh, be on the platform preaching. We wouldn't let them be on the platform leading the praise team. And so my question was, why does it seem that we tolerate that with women who have come out of that lifestyle? And people, nobody answered the question. They started making all these different arguments that I wasn't trying to make. So somebody feel free to answer that question now. We know that we would not tolerate a man coming out of that lifestyle. And we know that when you're in that lifestyle, that is what influences your desire to dress that way, right? So if I'm a new creature and I made new, eventually at some point, right, that's gonna go away, I'm gonna transform. But my point was we tolerate it with the women who say they've come out that lifestyle, but they're still dressing masculine, but we will not tolerate that with a male on the platform. Nobody can answer that. My, my argument is not about 
women wearing pants. My argument is not about women wearing baggy clothes. My argument is about dressing with the appearance to look masculine and vice versa, dressing with the appearance to look feminine. Now, some people say, oh, well, who's to define what that is? People were trying to act like they don't know what I'm talking about. You can dress in baggy clothes as a woman and still look feminine, right? You can dress in pants as a woman and still look feminine. Now, Deuteronomy 22, 5 says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, people will argue and say, well, that's the Old Testament. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he says, I change not. So what he felt in the Old Testament right? That's still a part of who God is. He said it's literally abomination, that strong language. And then in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor uh, idolaters, nor effeminate, right? So God wants his man to be masculine. He wants his woman to be feminine. And if we're being honest, and we're not trying to twist and manipulate what I'm saying, my point is, is when someone as a woman was in that lifestyle because she was in that lifestyle right that that lgbtq lifestyle it influenced her to dress masculine now when they come out of that lifestyle i'm not saying that they have to change immediately some people were making that argument my point is that why do we accept it on the platform and the danger of it is people wonder why i talk about the things that i talk about the bible says in the last days what there will be doctrines of devils seducing spirits great a great falling away that people would not endure sound doctrine that people would have itching ears and this is a perfect example of people having itching ears. why are you talking about that why would you bring it up just leave it alone because we see it is a problem in the church and it is spreading we have a lot of uh, young ladies dressing masculine. Remember, God took the, the feminine part out of Adam. And when the man and the woman come together, it's like two opposites to become one. It's not, it's not this mixture. And a little mixture, right, is bad for the church. And so the, the Bible is clear that this matters to God. Now, oh, uh, well, let me just play these clips. I'm gonna play a couple of clips real quick. Okay, so before he plays uh, the clips, I need to stop it, okay? Marcus Rogers, right? The things that he has said here, they are actually true. Marcus Rogers is uh, he is a false teacher. Not only is he a false, he's actually by definition he's a heretic. Okay, because Marcus Rogers is a oneness. He does not believe in the triune nature of God. So according to the scriptures, right, God is triune. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. If you don't believe that, then it puts you in that category, okay? But as we know, okay, in the local language, the broken clock is, is correct twice. Even demons know who God is, right? And they test, the devil knows the scriptures, okay? The devil knows the scriptures, but they can use it anyhow, okay? So, but the things that he's brought up in terms of uh, God, yes, God made male and female, Right. These are the distinctions that God has designed. OK, purposefully. So if we don't have if we have a problem with a man representing himself in a in a feminine way, then why do we give a pass to uh, when women are presenting themselves in a masculine way? OK, it should not be so. So that point, whatever he made is actually true, okay? So uh, thank you, you brought the scriptures up over here. This is actually the scripture that he actually read. So there's no need to be dismissing uh, that that's the Old Testament, so to speak, right? And like, okay, we're in the New Testament. It doesn't matter where we are. At. Whether we're in New Testament, we're in Old Testament, right? We know there's places for men, there's places for women, right? Like, we don't want women to represent themselves as men. Now, granted, there's people who God has redeemed from that lifestyle, for sure, right? But as God has redeemed you over time, those things, are, those things they need to change. You're going to develop different habits, okay? These are the things that come with somebody who is walking in the Lord. But because right now in our culture, we've made it to be uh, when we say like, okay, women should be dressing modestly and people be like, oh, so what, what is that? Should you wear a skirt? Should you wear, you know, we all bring these questions just to fight what the scripture teaches. Okay. We know when I say like, you know, if, if I tell you guys like, oh, I saw that lady, right. You know, if I make an example, right. I saw a lady, she was dressed like a hushi mama. You know what I mean. You have a picture of like, oh, wow. You see what I'm, I don't even have to tell you exactly what she was saying, but you understand what that means, right? So how, whatever we put on, whatever we dress, there is a represent, there is a way that we are representing ourselves, okay? So 
Why are you presenting yourself in that manner, in that way? And the 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 club bag is always like, oh, God looks in the heart. Yes, God is the one who looks in the heart. We don't see what's in the heart, okay? We see the tree and the tree is going to produce the fruit, right? We see what's outside. God is not going to fault us for not seeing what's inside. We have no access. That's for him, okay? So if you're going to come out here, you're looking like a hushi mama, okay? If people think that you're hushi mama, they are not wrong with thinking so because that's what you have represented yourself to be. So why are you representing yourself in that way, especially if you claim to be a Christian woman, right? Because the scripture says, like, you know, we, we have to dress modestly in, in, in a godly way, in a feminine way. So if we have issues with a man, we should be, you know, having issues um, uh, uh, with a woman as well, okay? So let's play the clip over here and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll see also other ladies who are actually going to church, you know, dressed in a, in a certain way, just like, no, 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 it shouldn't be so, okay? So uh, let's uh, let's continue to hear what he, he, the clip that he's going to share with us. I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about so there's no confusion, all right? People were trying to act like, I don't want to say acting dumb, but they were trying to act like they didn't know what I was talking about. They're saying, well, you're saying a woman can't wear pants. No, that's not my argument. You're trying to change the conversation. You're saying a woman can't wear baggy clothes. No, that's not my argument. You can wear baggy clothes and you can wear jeans and still look feminine. This is what I'm talking about right here. All right. Clearly, they're trying to look masculine, right? It's super clear. It doesn't look feminine at all. This is what I'm talking about. And we have women dressing in the church like this. And if we wouldn't tolerate, okay, a man, let me pause it because I want to talk about this clip. If we wouldn't tolerate a man coming in the church, right, from that lifestyle, we wouldn't let him get on the pulpit and address with feminine earrings, with feminine makeup. My question, if anybody can answer this, if you want to, if you want to just say, hey, it's just a double standard, right? Hey, we, we're not going to tolerate with a man, but we'll tolerate it with a woman. If you want to just say it's a double standard, then fine, I'll accept that. But the, the, my point is, we're not going to tolerate that with men in the church, but for some reason we tolerate it with women. And the danger of that is if we're not allowed to talk about it, if we're not allowed to address it, you start looking out in the crowds in these churches. Now, here's the thing. My, my other point was, is there residue, right? Are you all the way delivered or are you still struggling with it? Because if you came out of that lifestyle, right, then you should be delivered. You shouldn't desire to dress like that anymore. Now, maybe it could be residue of either you're still struggling with homosexuality. You could be struggling with insecurity because I do understand some women dress like that because of insecurity. All right. But the point is, God can deliver you, which is going to which leads me into my next uh, topic of discussion. Uh, I have no issue with Jackie Hill Perry. I hope I said that at the beginning of the video, because I know people have a short attention span. I don't want this video to go. Some very powerful and insightful things that she says, but I don't agree with everything that she says. And I'm going to show you an example right now. We're going to talk about it. All right. And it's OK not to agree with everything. All right. So let's play this. Uh, let's play this little clip and let's talk about it. All right, so this is what I'm talking about with the way that they're dressing masculine. All right, here we go. Let's run this back. Some of you seen me talk about this. Sexuality is not the fruit of heterosexuality is not the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Self control is because mm -hmm. now we're assuming that to be heterosexual means you are ethically right, and that's not true because yeah. half of the pastors that fall into sin are heterosexual. Right. So ultimately, what I'm saying is that God saves you for Himself, mm -hmm. and in saving you for Himself, He frees you from the penalty of sin and the power of sin. So as you continue to experience temptation, and most likely you will, you are now freed from its power, so you don't have to be a slave to it. We serve a, see a Savior who was tempted in all respects yet without sin. So now in Hebrews four it says, now we have a great High Priest who sympathizes with us. So let's go to Him. When we're weak. The problem is we don't want to keep going. Mm -hmm. So it's easier mm -hmm. for me to identify myself mm -hmm. by my sin instead of pursuing the Savior until the day I die. That takes time, that takes endurance, that takes effort, and it takes faith mm -hmm. to say that you are better than everything I feel. That's what I've been trying to say. So a lot of people said, hey, you got an issue with her because of this particular video. I did respond to this video. Notice the first statement she made. She was like, um, heterosexuality, right, doesn't make you biblically correct. Yes, it does. Because God, it's, it's not a sin for you to be attracted to the opposite sex. It is a sin to be attracted to the same sex. That means that there's something broken. Now, I don't know what you believe because there's all different types of Christians. That could be a result of maybe there was some kind of trauma, some kind of rape, some kind of molestation. There also could be some kind of demonic spirit there. But for you to be attracted um, to the same sex is not natural. So the issue that I had with her statement was she was saying the Holy Spirit is like going to give you self-control to just suppress those feelings. No, the Holy Spirit also wants to deliver you from those feelings. You don't have to wrestle with the rest of those feelings for the rest of your life. The same way that God delivers people from wanting to smoke, uh, the same way God delivers people from wanting to drink. And so, yes, I made a video about this, but just because I disagreed with her, it wasn't I wasn't saying, oh, Jackie Hill Perry's going to hell or she's false. And with the uh, video I made yesterday, 
I never even mentioned her. All right. People started arguing about her because they they took, you know, what I was saying as I was talking about her. Like I said, I've messaged her husband. I am down to have uh, a private conversation. I believe these conversations are necessary in the body of Christ. Why? Because the Bible says in the last days, they're not going to endure sound doctrine. There's going to be a great falling away that um, they're going to have itching ears, that there's going to be doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. So it's okay if you want to dress like that. God doesn't care about men being masculine. God doesn't care about females being feminine. Yes, he does. And we showed that in the Bible. He literally says it's an abomination for you to dress that way. And if God doesn't change, as the Bible says, that means his feelings didn't change on it. We're just in a new covenant of grace. But he still wants his man to be masculine and he wants his woman to be feminine. Even if you look at when he cursed Adam and Eve, the curse was different. According to a man, look, you're going to work, you're going to sweat. And according to a woman, you're going to have pain in uh, birth because there is a difference between a male and a female. And the world is trying to blur that line. And we cannot allow that to cross over in the church. And then the other point that I was making, because people get so frustrated with me about these conversations that I'm having, you know, why would you talk about this and, and my issue? And this is where um, I had messaged her husband commented and I responded. I said, look, I'm down to talk. But when it comes to this, my point is, how do you guys get upset about me just having this conversation? I'm not condemning nobody. I'm not saying nobody's going to hell. I'm just asking. And by the way, let me ask the question one more time because people came in late and I know they're, they're not going to watch the whole video. If a man comes out of that ex, uh, if he's in the LGBTQ community and while he was in the LGBTQ community, he was wearing dresses, he was acting real feminine and all that kind of stuff, right? If we're not going to allow him, if he says, hey, I'm saved, I'm living for God. If we're not going to tolerate a man in a dress, still dressing feminine, wearing earrings and stuff, on the platform preaching or leading worship why do we tolerate women who still dress masculine right and so there's a double standard there because we're going to look at that man and say bro there's there's some residue there you're not all the way delivered and that's all i'm saying if you're a new creature and you say that you're delivered and you're set free i'm not talking about wearing baggy clothes you can wear baggy clothes and look feminine all right you can wear pants and look feminine i'm talking about dressing to look masculine that desire came from an antichrist spirit right and we see it in the bible so uh my next point was it's crazy Okay, so uh, that's Marcus Rogers. Guys, to be quite honest, <laughs> it depends me to be in agreement with uh, Marcus Rogers, okay? You know, some language in there. But the bigger point that he is making, I think the bigger point does stand. Okay, the bigger point does stand. That clip that he showed, that was uh, Lacrae and Jack Hugh Perry. I did that video. I already did. I did that video uh, a while back. So take advantage for you guys to be able to see. Okay, I've done videos about uh, you know about Jack. So my issue with her is just like no, you Jackie doesn't. Jackie believes that you can be a Christian and still be a rainbow. Okay. That the scripture does not support that. And then every time she goes, oh, she even goes, uh, be like, oh, I've read any in all the 66 books, okay? You don't have to be uh, heterosexual. You have to be like, no, that's exactly what you have to be because that's what God created you to be. So you varying off to what God has created you to be, you need to come back to what God created you to be. So that's exactly what God created, male and female. Adam and Eve, right? This is the beginning of Genesis. So this idea where we, we give up on culture, like, oh, no, it's fine. No, 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 it is. You don't do that with any other type of sin. But this rainbow sin gets that category, okay? So can you still be a, a bank robber and still be a Christian? If the answer is saying no, then why are you saying you can still be a rainbow uh, and still be a Christian? Any other sin you're not going to adapt but this one. Right. So you having those desires. Right. Those desires are in contradiction to what God has designed. That is sinful. That is sinful. So then she uh, uh, she brought up the scriptures, the Hebrews. Right. Yes. Jesus was tempted. But this is also how people misuse that scripture. OK. Jesus was a fully God and fully man. OK. It was Jesus it was impeccable. It was impossible for him to sin. Him sympathizing with you and I, because he was a man, he walked this earth, right? He was hungry. He got tired. He knows, he understands what it means to be uh, a human being. In the same way, I always say like, wow, you know, oh, oh, you were sick. You had whatever COVID, right? Oh, I know how that feels, right? Like you understand, you understand what, the, you know, what that means. So not only that, when Jesus was being tempted, with the devil right when the devil was tempting jesus he was only tempting him with things that are actually good things not things that are sinful that are bad after the temptation he tempted him with food right 
there's nothing wrong for you to eat. There's nothing wrong with food. Jesus came for the kingdom, right? And devil like, oh, you don't have to go through all that. Just worship me, right? And he, while I hear the kingdoms, I offering him those shortcuts. Like, no. So, yeah, we cannot use the scripture to support whatever else we want. But I encourage you guys to uh, to take a look at that video that I uh, I responded to that video with Lacrae. Jackie, she's very articulate, well learned. When she's saying things, you be you have to pause like wait a minute. Okay? Otherwise, you just think like okay, whatever she's saying like, you know, you find yourself clapping, but it's just like no. When you look at the text, when you look at the scripture like no, 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 no. That's not what it is saying conversations but not these next conversations that we're about to hear more if your wife could keep it a buck with you she never signed up for five inches <laughs> why are you worried about her body shape and she gained a few pounds and all that kind of stuff where she's the wi-fi is going in and out i'm sorry about that i don't know why i'm gonna get it fixed but my point is why are we talking about that people don't get upset about that they say i'm controversial and you see that these guys continuously doing this i have always used strong language in my life both pre-salvation and post-salvation. <laughs> See, and this, So I'm gonna leave it right there because the Wi-Fi is acting up, but the point is this, this stuff that he's talking about and people don't get upset, but they get upset about me trying to have a conversation that I think the church should have because we're living in the end times, because we can't just let anything slide, because we can't let anything creep in. And I'm open to have these conversations with anybody. Notice in this video, I didn't condemn anybody to hell. I didn't say, oh, uh, you're going to hell or anything like that. All right. It's just a conversation that I think we should have. All right. Go to www.marcusrogersministries.org. Okay. So, so that's that. And it, th to be quite honest, this is even embarrassing because this is Marcus Rogers, right? So he's calling out uh, Tim Ross. And then Tim Ross, this guy is a preach, right? He's a preacher, professes to be a Christian. And yeah, that, that's his thing. Like he doesn't see anything wrong with him to be cursing. And you have Mike Todd, you know, the, the stuff that these guys do. Okay. So at this point you have a, you know, you have a donkey speaking, but he's speaking the truth. Like, okay, what's happening? Okay. Like we should just be taking care of these things ourselves, not waiting for, you know, like for the donkey to be speaking uh, on our behalf. Okay. Personally, uh, familiar with Jackie, you know, to me, it's just like, no, you're out here promoting that, okay, somebody can be a Christian and still be a rainbow. That's against the scripture. Okay. Out there this July doing ministry with uh, Bill Johnson, a non-heretic, and they think that's fine. Like, no, what fellowship has lied with darkness? So I've already done those videos. Okay. I've already done those videos. But I do think from what I'm remembering, uh, Jackie personally, I think she's trying to change in that area. Personally, I think she's trying to change in that area. Whatever Marcus Rogers was saying still stands, okay? So Marcus Rogers cleared up, wasn't zeroing in about Jackie, but that was the subject, okay? Now uh, we have some women, okay? So we, we are in agreement over here, right? Women, they need to dress in, in a feminine way, not in a masculine way, because that is against the scripture. That's the, there is no argument about that, right? Women need to dress modestly, not to be dressing, uh, you know, be a classy lady. Just dress normal. Present yourself in a way that's God honoring. It doesn't matter what Hollywood is saying. It doesn't matter what the culture is saying. We understand that. It matters to God, so it should matter to us. If it didn't matter, it wouldn't have been in the text. It wouldn't have been uh, in the scriptures. Okay? So now let's take a look at the ladies, okay, on the other side. I do agree. I'm not familiar people talking about women dressing in a masculine way. But it's more of like, okay, women just dressing, 
in a different way. So let's take a look at this uh, real quick. And once again, we have another donkey speaking. This time around, Juanita Bynum. So at this point, I'm like, it's embarrassing to have this guy speaking on behalf of, you know, in beha on behalf of the Christian community. <laughs> You know, and, and, and everything is, you know, you just, you know, we, we, we be serving the Lord without religion and we and we want spirituality. And I am number one that is raising the banner for that. But what I don't get is where the church is going to. What I really don't get is to the body of Christ and just the respect that we're supposed to have as women of God. That part is confusing me. It's confusing me when I when I when I look up and I see people on Sunday mornings doing praise and worship in bodycon dresses. Seeing women do praise and worship in bodycon dresses that is so tight until I can see the dimples in your behind. So tight until I see your thumb. I'm, I'm confused about the call of God, the call of God on our lives, the call of God. And instead of us understanding that we are in a strange land and that is a part of the promise and it's a part of the promise because of who we're supposed to be while we're in that land, we are becoming a part of the land. And that's the part that just got me going. That now you can't tell the believers from the unbelievers. Now there is no difference. You can't see the difference. Let alone feel the love of God. You can't see the difference. And I guess I'm just not understanding how pastors can allow people to parade in their churches looking like that. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord, on praise teams, ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack of your breast. Something is wrong. Who am I talking to? <laughs> That's not how women who professes godliness should be dressing. Okay, should be dressing. Leave that to Hollywood. Leave that to Hollywood. So, yes, I just wanted us to say like, okay, yeah, it, it's cutting both ways, right? Just because you've put on a dress, okay? Like, you know, hey, man, dress modestly. That's the moral of the story. <laughs>